above all those people. Fields of Blood tells Landry's story and follows the new owners as they ready the cowboys for the new season. Naked Sport, tonight at 9 on Channel 4. Now Derek Thompson holds our race card for this bank holiday afternoon's Channel 4 Racing. to a lot of horsepower on Channel 4 Racing and after the classics last week how about these classic cars today we've got about a hundred of them they've come from all over England putting on a, a fascinating display in front of the grandstands and it's all in aid of Sparks today this is sport aiding medical research for kids we've got a number of celebrities here and one of them is uh, in the driver's seat Floella Benjamin from Children's TV. This is something, isn't, isn't it? Isn't beautiful, lovely Bentley? I think it's a 1926, and I want it. Absolutely, you do. I know, I can see. And I love your racing outfit. This is rather good. Actually, it's Oxfam. <laughs> I like supporting charities in every way possible. But it's good for smarts. You take a big involvement as well, don't you? I, I do very much. I play uh, golf for them. Uh, I've got my own golfing days for youngsters, 10 to 18 year olds. Yeah. I raise money, and then that goes back normally sponsor us but in fact we've lost our sponsors so. anybody out there want to give some money to kids well and unless you've got the kids in the yeah. back seat what do you think about women drivers you two what do you think any good oh i think this is what we have to say oh. <laughs> oh. Oh. oh thank you very much that was very nice did you get your kids they never do this on children's <laughs> tv do they uh, thank you very much. Anyway, well, have you seen McCraig in the back seat, by the way? Just thought I'd point him out. He's here today. Don't worry. To... Oh, it's all right. Don't worry. Don't worry. Listen, let's have a look at what's on offer today on Channel 4. Here it comes. Well, we should have an enjoyable afternoon on what is the start of a very busy week for the Channel 4 team. Now, they're going here at Kempton. It's good on the Jubilee and straight course and good to firm on the round course. Basically, it's perfect ground. And we'll be starting with a mile and three-quarter race, followed by a six-furlong race for fillies. And here, Toucan Du, who originally was due to run in the 1,000 guineas, looks set to start a warm favourite. Then it's the traditional big betting race of Bank Holiday, the Jubilee, with 13 runners over a mile. And we round off with some promising three-year-old maidens over the same trip. Well, we'd all like to pick up a cool one-third of a million pounds come in handy for one or two of us. Well, when Zafonic won tap of his 2,000 guineas, a man called Johnny the Fish. That's just how much he landed, and we'll be talking to him. The check presentation will go on. He's a great character, uh, Johnny the Fish. Now, looking ahead to how the bookmakers do here, we'll give you this race. First of all, they're going now 5-4 to four on Long Silence. It's then 9-4 to four from 5-2 to two Dershan, 8-1 to one Matching Green, and a bit of money for Chakalak, number 2, from Double Carpet, 33-1 to one into 20-1, to one, but it's now 5-4 to four on Long Silence. And in the 3-10, they're betting 11-10 to 10 against Two Can Do, 11-4 to four Crime of the Century, and 6-1 to one Magique Grand Poix. And the tissue for the, for the Sparks Jubilee, quite a good betting race this has turned out to be this morning. 7-2 to two now, number 2, Dawning Street, one firm did go 11-2, to two, though how much they laid of that is open to dispute. Then 13 to 2, the past Lincoln winner High Low from 10 to 1. And Victor Chandler's laid 2,000 pounds each way twice against High Low. The Lincoln winners have a poor record in the Jubilee. 7 to 1, Neptune Fed. 8 to 1, Paul Luke of Port Sunlight. And 10 to 1, Royal Seaton. And in the 4-10, Draman, Draman Ice for Julie Cecil. That's 130, Berlin to Bertie. For her, all be mine. The favourite and the second at Haydock and fell throughout. 7 to 2, the top one, Ash Mann, still in the ever ready derby. 9 to 2, the Queen's Gelding, number 7, Prerogative, 7, Nafe and Shirar, and 10 to 1 against Glen Echo, number 9. A bit of money for that and for Gone Troppo. But there is some support for Glen Echo in that race there. 
This is it. This is the James Bond car in, uh, what was it, Goldfinger? The, uh, the guns come out of the lights. There's another Aston Martin. This is a beauty. It's worth over about £100,000. We can't offer you hundred grand. What we can offer you is £100 if you win Dial Your Duel. It's on the 340 race this afternoon, and all we want you to do is to try and pick two horses that you think will finish in the first three, and then dial 0891 400 004, and if you get it right, you could win £100. Well, what we're doing, we recorded the first race for you. We'll show that, and we'll also show you how Opera House got on in the big race at Longchamp yesterday, the pre -Ganning. But meanwhile, some results from around the country, starting at Haydrick with the 12.50, won by number three, Bossian Chieftain, 25 to one, second number five, Cardinal Red, six to one, and third number six, Crystal Spirit, the seven to four favorite, long runner eight and seven, Ryan. The 1.25 went to number three, Thinking Twice, 11 to four, second number one, Bell Boss, four to one, and third number two, Baton Blue, at three to one. Number four, Albin Mime, was the two to one favorite, that was a faller, and five, Ryan. The two o'clock went to number three, spinning, three to one favorite. Second number six, Jungle Knife, 11 to one. Third number 11, Ponty Nicewin, 25 to one. Fourth number 13, Persuasive, 33 to one, 17 ran. Doncaster, the 228, soon as reprieve, five to four favorite. Four, Northern Caledon, seven to two. And six, Indian Crystal, eight to one, 11 ran. Two, Newcastle, the 215, eight, White Creek, four to one. Five, Fletcher's Bounty, 10 to one and three ballad dancer, seven to two joint favorite. Number six, gallery artist was the other joint favorite. Non-runner four, 10 ran. At Warwick, the 145, 17, rosy toes, 16 to one. Eight, Lady Lacey, 12 to one. Three, Buddy's Friend, seven to one. And five, Proud Brigadier at eight to one. Number four, Mexican dancer was the seven to two favorite. Non-runner 21 and 21 ran. And the 215 went to number seven, Princess Hyper, five to one. Second number one, Bel Mahar, 11 to 10 on favorite. And third number five, Hard Task, 16 to one. On runner eight, nine round. Exeter, the two o'clock, 18, Elsa, 11 to two. 17, Oats and Barley, 20 to one. And five, Il Bambino, three to one favorite, 17 round. On 12, the two o'clock, first number five, Nordan, six to one. Second number two, Will Toski, 12 to one. And third number one, take two at two to one. Number four, Tudor de Sambo is the six to five on favorite and seven ran. Toaster, the 205, four, Shelley's Folly, 12 to one. Seven, Milliel, two to one favorite. And nine, Plentiful, 33 to one, 11 ran. And John Tyrrell and his team will be keeping us up to date with all the results from the day's 10 meetings today. But uh, some news in. There's a non-runner in race six. Number six, Comanchura, does not run. And also John Reed, the jockey, isn't feeling too well. He's taken the day off. And that means his ride on Neptune's pet, one of the strongly fancied runners in the Jubilee, now goes to David Harrison, the talented three-pound claimer. But let's get straight at the action. They're at the post for the 240. They're helping children through sport condition stakes. It's over a mile and six. And uh, let's have a look at how they bet. John Tyrrell. Thank you, Derek. Long Silence is the 5-4 to four on favourite. Uh, Sean 5-2. to two. Matching Green 8-1 to one with Native Chieftain at 12s. Trackaluck is 14-1 to one from 16-1. to one. Intricacy on 25s. And Baladaya 33-1. to one. Well, I think I just about agree with that because Long Silence, a good third first time out. But watch out for Dershan with Pat Edry on board. Let's get the expert opinion of Oxy and Frank. And chaps, what do you fancy here? Well, it certainly seems to be between those two, Derek. And there's a line of form which I've worked out. Well, somebody's worked out for me. Through Castle Courageous. They've both run against Castle Courageous. And that puts Long Silence just about five or seven pounds in front of Dershan but uh, it might easily be close between these two, but this alleged filly, uh, she won a Ripon last season and ran really well against Allegan and Castle Courageous in her early run this year. Yeah, there's actually not much of her, as you can see, very lightly made, sparely made filly by alleged, and that last run behind Allegan was over a mile and six, she'd been running over a mile and four before that. Put up some useful bits of form, seems suited by a little bit of cut in the ground. Let's have a look at Dershan, though, much better sort of horse. He was bought from John Ox by John Jenkins, who trains him now as a jumping horse. And uh, 
He did have the one run over hurdles for John, but he said he sort of got a little bit late in the season. It was a shame to waste his novice status. But uh, really well turned out here this afternoon. Looks, looks tremendous, Dersham. As you said, his form really is in Ireland. He's won a race at Tralee and Mallow uh, for John Ox. And there's another ex-Ox horse in this race too, a six-year-old mare, Balladea. But yep. I think I'd be rather surprised if she figures. Let's Actually have a ran well the other day, Dersham, just a couple of days ago at Salisbury. And what was a very fast run race horse went off uh, very quickly. Did well to uh, get there in the end. Let's have a look at number one now. One or two Simon Day runners, native chieftain. This is an almost black, uh, black horse, this native chieftain by Trojan Fen. He's stepping up in distance, been running over a mile, mile and a quarter. And uh, he's won on the all weather at Lingfield this year. Others to mention are Matching Green, nice filly by Green Ruby, who, uh, like Matching Green, trained by Toby Gordon. John Williams rides that one. She's having her first run of the season. They've got a mile and six to go. Just about all in. Let's join Graham. And long silence, the odds on favourite. For this helping children through sport condition state. The trip is a mile six. And they bounce out of the storm through the level line. And uh, through the first furlong, it doesn't look as if anybody is keen to make the running. The early pace could have been a predictive problem. And it's long silence on the rail from uh, Balladea out wide. These one and two. To Trackalak showing in third place, taking a keen hold. Dershan in the red cap out wide is in fourth. And then matching green the rail five, followed by Intricacy. And the back marker is Native Chieftain. And so they race away from the stands. And it's Baladia by a couple of lengths to Long Silence on the rails in second place. And then uh, showing in third is Dershan. That's in the red cap, followed by Chakalak the rails. And then matching green, followed by Intricacy. And Native Chieftain is still the back marker. It's Valadier leading. Clear by about uh, three or four, five perhaps now, to Long Silence in second place. Then after Long Silence is Dershan showing in third, with matching green in fourth. And behind that one, Chakalak and Intricacy. And still native chief from is the trailer. Balladeer just increasing the tempo and going six clear now of Long Silence in second. And then Dershan showing in third, but there's our leader. That's uh, Balladeer, been off the track as far as the flat is concerned for quite some time. Clear by six, the odds on favourite Long Silence, and then Dershan showing in third, and matching green in fourth, just being niggled along, pushed along. And then uh, Chakalak and Intricacy, and still rises at the rear of the field, Native Chieftain, yet to make his move. But Balladea, she's uh, still clear by about six lengths, the long silence in second. Stephen Davis out in front, but uh, they've switched the magnet on now, uh, the chasing pack, and he's coming back to them. Long silence in second, with Chakalak in third, and then Dershan in fourth. And these are followed at a length and a half by Matching Green. So they start the turn for her. Still Balladeer that has the edge as they come down to the three furlong marker. From Long Silence in second and then Chakalak is in third. Dershan in the red cap is in fourth, hasn't uh, made his move yet and being pushed along now. Matching Green is starting to stay on. Intricacy, the blue colours on the extreme right. Now the favourite, Long Silence, comes to take it as they go past the two. Long Silence in the green jacket. Paul Ettery goes two or three clear now of the long-time leader, Balladeer Dershan. Under hard pressure, the rail for Pat. They've still got just over a third on the go. And Long Silence has it, but Dershan is in pursuit. Now he's coming inside the final third off. It's Dershan coming to press Long Silence. The brothers Ettery duel. Long Silence will run the rail. Dershan in second place, and Long Silence takes it from Dershan second with Balladeer third. These are followed by Native Chieftain, and then came Matching Green after these, Chakalak, and behind Chakalak with Intimacy. And so the result of this our 240 race at Kempton Park today, the helping children through sport condition state. It's over a mile six. It's a win for horse number six, Long Silence, in the colours of WS, WS Parish the third, framed by...
Julie Cecil and ridden by Paul Edery. Second horse home is number three, which is Dershan. Third horse home, number four, Balladeer. And that one ridden by Stephen Davis. So, the Brothers Edery duel in this race. Paul Edery in the green jacket, Pat Edery the red cap, and Long Silence has the advantage. Paul just looks round, sees Pat in pursuit, but he's got the measure of him. And arguably she wins with just a little bit in hand. This daughter of the ledge, who made significant progress last year and certainly had the conditions in her favour today. Well, I don't think Pat Edery had any idea of helping his younger brother. And he, in fact, he made just a thought that he was going to catch him for a moment. I wonder whether there's been any brotherly conversation exchanged here. You'll see Paul Edery looking round in his moment of triumph. But at this stage, he simply takes long silence easily into the lead. And you'd think that Pat was fighting a losing battle on Dershan. Well, he turns out to be fighting a losing battle, although he gets a lot closer than the seems apparent at this stage. Yeah, long silence looks like winning quite easily. Yeah, and I thought the mere Balladea stuck to her guns really well, to be fair. She cut out most of the running. And uh, long silence making the best of her way home now. All she does is stay this filly. And uh, Dershan looked a little bit cooked. Suddenly changed his legs. Pat's got him out with a run on the outside to uh, give him every chance. And really got this horse motoring at one stage. He's starting to uh, get into gear. And I thought maybe he was going to give long silence a little bit uh, more of a race of it than he did in the end, but Paul was always aware of what was going on, just uh, squeezed a little bit harder, pushed this uh, filly of Julie Cecil's out and uh, afforded himself a look round just before the post. And Long Silence has returned at five to four on favourite, and it touched 11 to eight on the course. The second, Dershan, went off at 11 to 4, and the third, Balladeer, a 25 to 1 chance. Plenty of applause going out there for Long Silence, and compensation for Julie Cecil, whose All Be Mine was favoured in the second at Haydock, and fell to out when just in front. And Long Silence, when living up to his name, I'd have thought some people I know on the Channel 4 team, they should live up to her name as well. A pity by alleged, out of a mare by Roberto, and a good, tough filly who might easily breed some top-class horses later on. Julie Cecil, one of the uh, wittiest and uh, prettiest, and I can't quite read the rest of her writing, which she's put on this card. <laughs> Trainers in um, Newmarket, she had a smashing start to the season. Got plenty of other horses with a chance this afternoon. This one's already won, though. Let's have a look at her starting price. First, number six, Long Silence, the five to four on favourite. Second, number three, Dashan, 11 to four. And third, number four, Balladeer, 25 to one. Seven run, the tote pay 170 the win. The place is 160 and 160 again. The dual forecast came to one pound 90 and the computer straight forecast to three pounds 47. Just have a look at the uh, the winner with the trainer, Julie Cecil. Did that nicely in the end. You tell me what, she was hiding a little bit in front? Mm. Yeah. But once like the, much softer than that too. Yeah. But once the second came out of she really stuck her neck out. Oh yeah, she's certainly more than she has. But well, look at her forelegs, yeah. Yeah. But she's done it nicely and yeah. could go on to much better things. I hope so. Look at what this race is worth. Yes. Yeah. What is it uh -huh. worth? Oh, it's all it's all in aid of charity though, helping yeah. children through school. Well, I'm all for that, but yeah. I wish yes. I wish we could give them a bit more. I know. Yeah. Now what about the other runners you got today? Golden guest in yeah. the next, the three ten. Yeah. Well I hope she'll run all right. She goes yeah. nice at home. Yeah. And uh, I hope the other, I mean, hope the other horse, he's run three times very well. Dramanise. So we'll see what happens, yeah. That sounds good. Now, how is it going for you? Third season of trainer. Mm. How many winners so far this year? Um, I've had seven on the flat and four over jumps. Yes. And one just fell flat in his face. Oh, how is he? Is he all right? Up he's at all right, off? yes, thank you. And he would have just about won, we think, if he'd he stood up. He's going quite nice, a bit clumsy, yeah. <laughs> a bit clumsy. Well, yeah. it's good to see you going well. We might see you here later on this afternoon. I very much hope so. Thank so, you. Same here. Thanks, Jerry. Now, we're talking about Haydock. Let's get news of the last race there. JT, 2.30. One by number six, Brumile at 14 to one. A second number four, Angelica Park, 13 to two. And third, number three, Shimmering Scarlet at four to one. Number five, Heathfield Gale was the 13 to eight on favorite. That was a faller, non-runner two and five round.
Now, the first race this afternoon was the Sporting Bears made mistakes. Sporting Bears, you know we started the program with the cars. Well, the Sporting Bears, the guys who own and drive those cars, and they take them around different places and raise money for charities. So, well done, the Sporting Bears. Well, we had 16 three-year-olds over a mile, and two of the runners, Tokar Ben and Zanzi, both hold entries in the Oaks. But the one the punters latched onto was Anna Sarti. And this one carries the Sarah Darty colours. She's beautifully bred by Chris out of that top-class race mare, Dabba Wea. From the stable in form, that of Clyde Britton's. And as they went in the stores, this was how they met. Anisati, the 130 favourite. Tap on air, 5 to 1. Chocoban, 11 to 2. Arad, 7 to 1. And Ducromi, 9 to 1, 12 to 1 bar. Race away, the trip's a mile, and uh, very smartly away on the extreme left is uh, Keep Safe in the yellow colours, that's showing up prominently. Also Alaskan Princess, and the red cap towards the right haven of love. White cap for why the pack is Miss Killer Blue, and Anisati just off the base in blue. These are followed by Tapidera and the Sheikh Mohammed colours, and the yellow cap just in behind these races, uh, Swiss Mountain. These are followed by uh, Rada. One of the back markers early on is Tokar Band, and the back marker is Suffer with Susie. At the end of the first quarter mile then, and Haven of Love, the yellow colours out wide of Alaska Princess, these one and two, with the third place Miss Kinabalu, and then in fourth the Blue Anisati, then tap one air, followed uh, by Kinashia, who's taking quite a keen turn. Supper on Susie, still the back marker, and they've passed the halfway stage. Alaskan Princess, the dark green jacket on the rail, yellow colours out wide, Haven of Love, little to choose between these two. Anisati, the rail's in third, the white cap of Miss Kinabalu, making a bit of ground on the outside. Is Glint of Air. These are followed by Arada. Also starting a run now is Dukrami, and they're heading for home. And it's Alaskan Princess going on by about a length, but Anasadi is after her. Then on the very wide outside, the red cap haven of love. Just in behind these comes Miss Kinapalu. Dukrami is starting to pick up. Top half bands coming with a run. They've got to stay over a long and a half to go. And it's Alaskan Princess, the rails pressed by Anasadi the outside. And as they race inside the final furlong, it's Anasadi just come to take Alaskan Princess off the pace, top half down, finishing like a rocket and Dick Crowley is not that far away either but up towards the line, Anasad is going to take it Anasad here, top half down, boy that's close Alaskan Princess was third second horse there finishing well. She's one of those that holds an Oaks entry. She'll be much better suited by the longer trip. But what about the winner? Nice sort, Anasati. Beautifully bred. She does a lot of swimming. They swim her because she's got very bad joints. And I think she'll go on to much better things. And also, Clive Britton reports, Say Daddy in tip-top shape after a superb victory in the 1000. And his other top filly, Sue Boog, will work Wednesday morning at 5.30 with Walter Swinburne at Newmarket. And after that, they'll decide whether to go for the French 1000 guineas or the Musidora at York next week. Let's get confirmation of the SP. First number three, Anasati, 130 favourites. Second number 15, Tokaban, 11 to 2. And third number one, Alaskan Princess, returned at 12 to 1. The tape paid 3.40 for the win. The place is 160, 210 and 4 pounds exactly. The dual forecast came to 6 pounds and 40 pence. And the CFF to 2012 and 16 rounds. And at Fontwell, the 230 was won by number six in the zone at 20 to 1. Second, number seven, Gilson Lads, 5 to 2 favourite. And third, number one, Fighting Days at 10 to 1, seven round. Warwick, the 245, won by number nine, Final Frontier, 4 to 1 favourite. Second, number eight, Credit Squeeze, 13 to 2. And third, number five, No Extras, 7 to 1, 14 round. And the first two jollies have gone in here today at Kempton. That's bad news for the bookmakers. There's a short price horse coming up, as you would expect the filly two can do, put in tips, 11 to 10 favourite. It's an 11 to 4, that's against Crime of the Century. 5 to 1, number 2, Magique Rampoir. 7 to 1, Yakin. And 10 to 1, Brockton Dancer, with 14 golden guests and 50 to 1 bar, but two can do. Are we going to get the first three favourites in at Kempton on the bank holiday Monday? Well, we'll know soon enough. Well, Pat Edry was taken a weller and rest yesterday. Michael Roberts was uh, over in Paris doing business in the Group 1 pre -Ganny. His mank there was Opera House, who ironically had been taken out of the Gordon Richards Stakes at Sandown last week because of the heavy going. Well, thunderstorms uh, before racing at Longchamp turned to going an awful lot softer than it had ever been at Sandown. The connections of the Sadler as well, Colt decided to let him take his chance had seven opponents for this uh, mile and a quarter event. Let's have a look, see how they were betting. 
Dear Doctor, winner of the Arlington Million last year. Well, he was even money favourite. Opera House, Michael Roberts, twinned up with uh, Boston Two-Step. They were on 11 to 2. And uh, down at the bottom there, Vera Mande, Dominic Booth, third in the arc last year, was 12 to 1. This is what happened. Race away then. Dear Doctor gets a very smart break, but uh, pushed through in the yellow sleeves is Marildo. It's Marildo setting the pace, but on the outside, Boston two-step, uh, the maroon colours with a sash, and these two uh, duel for the lead in the first furlong. Politan uh, is showing in third place, followed by Opera House 4. Dear Doctor Y, that's on the right of the group in five, Arkan, just behind that, and then Missil the Grey, and the early trailer is Verto Mar. They're making their first turn now, and it's Boston two-step under Walter Swinburne setting the pace. Cleared by a couple of lengths to Marildo showing in second, on the outside, Opera House is in third, and Dear Doctor four. Politaine in the red cap, the rail shares that position. Arkong between those two, a length back to Missile in the back marker is still Verto Moore. It'll change into the first half mile. Boston two-step really pointing his toe. Clear by about four to Opera House, the outside of the chasing pack. Marildo, the rail. And then Dear Doctor racing freely, and uh, with that one is Arkong, followed by Politaine, the rail, Verto Monde, and Missile still the back marker. And as they make this second turn, it's still Boston two-step in the lead by a couple of lengths to Opera House. And they're making another turn now, and it's Boston two-step on this heavy ground, clear by a couple of lengths to Opera House, at length and a half back to Dear Doctor. And then comes Marildo showing in fourth. That's on the rail. Just behind that one is Politaine and Hong Kong, followed uh, by Verta, Mont and Mitchell, still the back marker. Still have one more bend to take, and it's Boston two-step. Walter Swinburne coming wide, allowing Opera House uh, to come through on the inside. And they've got just over two furlongs to go now. And it's Opera House coming through with Dear Doctor of the White and Blue Hoops lead, still pulling double. Arkong's behind these, and the back marker still Verdo Mond as they make this final turn. And it's Opera House, the rail, Dear Doctor. On the outside, Arkong in the blue colours, Politane in behind them. Yellow colours on the right coming with the run is Verto Mond. Uh, the tempo quickening now, and it's Opera House and Dear Doctor still travelling well. Here comes Verto Mond on the outside, and Marildo on the rails. But it's Opera House going on. Verto Mond makes a race of it. Dear Doctor between the two can find no more. And it's Verto Mond now as they race inside the final furlong from Opera House in second place. They're two or three clear of Dear Doctor. Missile is finishing well. But Verto Mond and Opera House duel as he race up towards the line. Verto Mond just edging out at the line. Verto Mond just gets it from Opera House. So Vertamon getting up there in the closest of finishes to beat Michael Roberts on the Big British Hope Opera House. And you were telling me the, the ground there was, was bottomless, apparently. Yes, uh, it was very soft ground. Uh, it was the softest ground they've had, I don't know for, for how long, you know, it was uh, 5.1. The reading, you know, and uh, it was it was very heavy ground. So in those conditions, basically, your horse must have run an absolute cracker. He did, you know. I, I just feel on better ground, you know. He was travelling so smoothly, and uh, you know, when I let him down, he didn't, you know. I think on better ground, he, he would have quickened, you know, away from it. And I mean, he's very brave because I mean, you know, the winner came uh, by me about three parts of a length. He went yeah. actually up on me. You can't really see that on, yeah. on the television, but he went up three parts of a length, and he just kept trying. And, and just fighting back all the way to the line. I thought it was a fantastic performance. You know, it's a shame he had to, you know, had to get beat, really, you know. Here you are. Now you've just been asked to quit. And the, the, the one in the middle, dear Dr. Cash in the Hoops, finds absolutely nothing after cruising. Yes, he came in with a lot of horse, and, uh, you know, I thought he was, yeah, um, you know, just going to be between the two of us. But, you know, I also had a lot of horse underneath me. Uh, but I could feel my fellow was going to battle to quicken up on that soft ground. Uh, yeah. And here comes on this side, Vertamond and uh, Dominic Burp staying on really well but you fight back which is always a good sign yes i mean you know i think uh, you know this was going to have a good season and uh, you know but, but he's very tough and brave it's, you know it's unbelievable and you can feel him actually stretching stretching all the way there you know and you know he just won't give up you know i thought it was a fantastic performance not about performance in that sort of ground all goes well for the future of opera house this season but that was a race on sunday and that looked a cracking contest and plenty of group one winners in that but looking back to saturday i mean barathea against the phonic we're just looking at the time there i know the phonic shattered the course record but you beat the previous old record and without the phonic barathea would have been a very good 2000 guineas winner yeah he's a very good horse you know the first time i sat him you know i rated him very highly you know yeah. i was very excited about him um, obviously we were a little bit disappointed in the craven but you know he, he needed to race uh, badly in the craven because he's, he's, he's a big burly horse you know and uh, he's, he, he came on a hell of a lot from the craven to the guineas and you know i'd high hope for him to run a big race but you know unfortunately we had to 
Crazy Gay Stefani. Let's have another look, because I know you've, you've been so busy this weekend, you might like to see exactly <laughs> what happened. There you second left, and on your outside, could you uh, could you see him absolutely cantering next to you, Pat, on yeah, I, uh, you know, I just saw this big head, you know, cruising up to my girths, uh, you know, just going down into the tip there, and, uh, you know, but I was going pretty well. I thought I was going to give him a race, but, you know, he had a bit more speed than me, but the miles ran a brave race. The very, very good horse, you know, both of them, I think. Horses. I mean, you've ridden uh, top-class horses all around the world, and you ran a very, very good race in second. But look, the winner is stretching away. Yeah, but taking away, I would have been a great winner. Wouldn't you would have been, yeah. So where does that put Zephonic? Well, you know, he's a bit of a freak, isn't he? Uh, Do you think he is? Well, he must be to come, you know, to, uh, to beat a field of, you know, three-year-olds like that. I mean, you know, mm. uh, last year's a two-year-old he did, and, you know, he's come back again, and, uh, you know, um, everything, you know, points to being a good race, the time and everything is there, you know? Mm. But the, he's a fantastic animal. The good thing in that race, apart from finishing a very respectable second, was that you chose right. You got the of the shape of habit horse because this season you've been getting it getting it wrong. No, I wouldn't say so much wrong. You know, you're always trying to ride a horse in a trial, something you know for the future. You know, yeah. it's, it's uh, you know I don't just look at it. Oh, well, we want to ride um, the winner of a Pacific race. You know, I always look you know towards the big races. Mm. Uh, but you know, we still have quite a few seconds in these big ones, but I'm sure it'll come right just now. Well, listen, it's good for you to come out and talk to us, because I know you've had a very, very busy weekend, and thank you for bringing that to uh, the film of the Ghana back for us, which was good. And just tell us, what are you riding in the next, and what sort of chance? Well, I think it's a little filly. I think she'll go quite nicely. Obviously, you know, uh, two can do is going to be uh, quite hard to beat, but uh, I think she'll go well. Well, hope so. Thanks for joining us, Michael. My pleasure. Good luck. Thank, thank you. you. Now, let's have an SP from Newcastle. JT. A 245, one by number one, Daily Sport Dutch at five to one. Second, number two, Plum First, five to one again. And third, number six, Girl Next Door returned once more at five to one. Number four, Glisso, and number five, Jotra, with the 92 joint favourites, and 10 round. And at Exeter, the 230 was won by number one, Ambassador Royale, six to four. Second, number five, Handy Lass, 11 to 10 favourite. And third, number two, Prince Valmy at seven to one, five round. Well, the jockeys have just walked into the paddock, so plenty of time for before the start of our next six furlong contest. We'll take a short break, but we'll be right back. All over Britain, people varnish with Ron Seal. They spend hours creating something beautiful. And all the family says is, Dad, you've missed a bit there. On behalf of these unsung heroes, we'd like to congratulate Mrs. Wilson. Oh, thank you very much. <laughs> Ron Seal brings home the beauty of wood. Michelin is launching the first generation of high-performance tyres that allows you to choose the colour of your driving. Pilot CX for luxury driving. Pilot SX for demanding driving. And Pilot HX for long distance driving. You choose the colour of your car, now you can choose the colour of your driving. Michelin Pilot. types of engines demand different types of oil. Castrol has developed four specialist oils, from simple mineral to fully synthetic, that will cool, clean, and protect every engine. So whatever car you drive, Castrol has the oil. Castrol, the liquid engineers. Shredded wheat is 100% whole wheat. There's nothing added. It's just basic bran fiber. Simply crammed with carbohydrates. Shredded wheat is what the big boys get up for. Shredded wheat and shredded wheat bite size. Already know you don't need muscles to use Mr. Muscle non-smear window cleaner. Now we'll prove Mr. Muscle no rinse bathroom cleaner is just as tough. Mr. Muscle loves the jobs you hate.
one of these men is wearing sunglasses by Varney. Each lens is ground, polished, then thermally toughened. Patented amber lenses provide optimum clarity in all light conditions, and Varney's mirror filters protect against the strongest glare. The other pair doesn't even get a look in. Export from Carlsberg for those who know the difference. From the fairest cape in all the world, the freshest fruit under the sun. Real goodness of Cape grapes and pears. Just picked, just perfect, from the Cape of good quality. Welcome back to Kempton now. It's the battle over the straight six for the Shield Club Phillies, condition stakes. Two very, very nice horses in this, but number seven, Golden Guest, is being walked down, so you haven't missed anything, so it's still going to be a couple of minutes before they uh, get down to the start and get themselves sorted. This is Paul Edry riding for Julie Cecil, and Two Can Do is an interesting one here, bound to start, I would think, a warm favourite. Uh, was in season for the 1,000 guineas, that's the reason she didn't run there, but watch out for crime of the century. Saw this win over five at Folkestone, should appreciate the longer trip today. Gigi, let's have the runners and riders for this 310. And the stalls are placed on the far side. Number one, Crime of the Century at five, Richard Quinn. Number two, Magic One Point at three, Willie Ryan. Three is two, Can Do at six, Ray Cochran. Four, Auntie Ginger at one, Michael Roberts. Five, Rockland Dancer at two, Lester Figget. Number six is Desert Nomad at seven, Chris Rutter. Seven, Golden Guest at four, Paul Edery. And completing the lineup, number eight, Yarkin, drawn eight, written by Richard Hills. Runners down at the start. And here's how the market trades. And two can do is the favourite, 11 to 8, opened at 11 to 10. Crime of the Century is 4 to 1, opened up at 3s. And Magie Rompin is 6 to 1, opened at 5s. Gay Kid an 8 to 1 chance from 7s. And Brockton Dancers back to 10 to 1 from 12s. Golden Guest also on the 10 to 1 mark in from 14s. Desert Nomad at 66 to 1, along with Auntie Ginger. Well, inevitable that two can do should be favourite because throughout her career she's been running against the best of her contemporaries and uh, in the Nell Gwynn stakes her only run this season she finished pretty close behind the 1000 guineas winner Sarah Darty. Yes and she didn't settle all that well she was actually slowly away from the stalls but then didn't settle didn't do her cause any good at all and as you can see Ray Cochran's given her every chance she's just tracking through Sarah Darty there and uh, runs a smashing race I think uh, Conrad Allen was delighted with that for her first run of the season. Back in fifth, another one of today's uh, runners there is Magic Ron Prons, just into the right of your picture, just uh, finishing some way behind uh, Two Can Do. She'll have to do, um, do very well to reverse the placings. Very well turned out this afternoon. Unfortunately, she had to uh, miss last Thursday's guineas, but uh, she ought to get consolation here. The one who's in form this season is Crime of the Century. She's won both her races for Paul Cole. And the last time out, when she beat Yakin, uh, who she meets again today, and Yakin's a really nice Nurey of Philly. Nevertheless, Crime of the Century beat Yakin quite comfortably at Folkestone, uh, despite keeping changing her legs on that sort of reasonably uneven course. And arguably, Kempton will suit her better. Uh, she won quite comfortably, as I say, despite all the changes of legs. Yeah, she looked a little bit inexperienced on that occasion. I thought she showed uh, tremendous courage to actually win because she was getting the worst of the uh, battle for a long way and then the further she went, the better she was going and certainly this extra furlong will suit her. Let's have a look at the filly who ran behind two can do, Magic Rompon. And she's by the American stallion, Grinton, who gets uh, long distance horses. And uh, she's proving an actual fact that uh, this six furlongs are probably be to her liking. She's run over a mile before, and uh, seven furlongs, she's run over seven at Goodwood. 
And coming back to this six, they've obviously decided that despite her pedigree, she's uh, a much sharper filly. Let's have a look at Yakin. As I said, she finished, or she was beaten fair and square by crime of the century uh, at Folkestone. Uh, is three pounds better off the three lengths, but uh, they were three fairly comfortable lengths, I think. But isn't this a lovely filly? Van She's Urea. a smashing looking filly, this. And she won at Wolverhampton last year. It was a bit of an, an egg and spoon race. And uh, then it didn't do anything uh, really as much as, and anywhere near as much as was expected of her, I think. And has got a bit to find behind that running on crime of the century. Anyway, not surprisingly, if you look at it, there are a few people backing her, and Max got news. Yes, there certainly are. Yakim into 7-1 to one from 8-1, to one, but the first two favourites have got in. Bookmakers trying to get the money back quite quickly, and they're pushing out two can do, from 11-10 to 10 to 11-8. to eight. And in one place, it's Eerol, 6-4 to four against the favourite here, two can do, but 11-8 to eight, the general bride. Weak crime of the century, out to 4-1. to one. Six Magic Rampois, and now Yakim come in another point. 6 to 1 against Yakim. There's a bit of money for Brockton Dancer, 12 to 1 into 10 to 1. And also Golden Guest, 14 into 10 to 1. Any price the rest. Only bookmakers here fielding for a result. They've got confidence they can get beaten. Two can do. And also crime of the century. Let's see. Brockton Dancer on her best form would have a chance here. Finished second to Ian Boarding's poker chip at Newbury last year, but uh, lost her form after that. But uh, if she rediscover that she'd have some sort of a chance golden guest who went down early lovely rainbow quest filly out of intimate guest who was a former inmate of warren place she's certainly not without a chance but uh, they're just about all in so uh, graham what do you fancy here i must say i think uh, crime of the century is uh, a big price on the form she's done this year we'll soon see but the early pace from stalls four and eight possibly but oh dear golden guest uh, completely misses the kick and on the wide outside auntie ginger in those green and white colors show prominently crime of the century in the christopher wright blue and yellow racing fast Brockton dance between the pair and Yakin uh, running the rail and the nose band. That's going well. Two can do the favourite just behind it. And then these are followed by Desert Nomad and uh, Golden Guest. Difficult to recover from that slow start at this pace. And it's Yakin the rail. Uh, hurdled that path by about a neck to crime of the century on the outside. These stride for stride. Just ahead of Two Can Do, poised on the heels of the leaders, ready to pick them up. Brockton Dancer going with Two Can Do. The one that's uh, trading now is Hartley Ginger. Desert Nomad drops out the back. And they've got just over two to go. Yark in the rail and crime of the century digging deep for reserves. Here comes Brockton Dancer. Lester in the orange sleeve jacket on the outside. Magic one point behind that one. They come down to the final furlong. And Yark in the rail and Brockton Dancer. Two can do, has to be pulled wide. Crime of the century picks up. Red colours really flying inside the final furlong. It's Golden Guest with Brockton Dancer and Two Can Do. We're going to fight out the finish. Brockton Dancer, Brockton Dancer with Two Can Do. From Golden Guest to the arc in the head of Crime of the Century. A magic one, point, six legs back to uh, Desert Nomad behind these game Auntie Ginger. And so the result then of this, the Shield Club Village Condition Stakes to win for number five. Brockton Dancer in the colours of Mrs. Uh, D.A. Latrobe, written by Lester Pigott and trained at Marlborough by Richard Hannon. Second horse home is number three, Two Can Do. This one written by Ray Cochran. Third horse home is number seven, Golden Guest, who has in the past made the running, but uh, in the end today certainly missed the break, but finished very well indeed. And off what seemed to be a strong pace, I'm sure uh, she was going to be a filly to follow. Obviously, this is a very keen head, golden guest, but uh, I'm sure that she'll be picking up races. However, today's race has gone to Brockton Dancer, daughter of Fairy King, just pipping to can do. And the third horse home was number seven, golden guest. And Yarkin, who helped blaze the trail, eventually finished fourth. Rather a puzzling sort of race Two Can Do has run. I think she was a little bit slow to get into her stride. You can see Ray Cochran there tracking crime of the century. But uh, you can't say that uh, Two Can Do is 
seriously interfered. Oh, I'm not so sure. Perhaps she is short of daylight there. Well, I'm not sure that she was interfered with. There was never anywhere for her to go. She's actually raised them well to get her out into a challenging position. If you remember early on in the race, he was just one off the rails. And it was actually a very good tactical ride by Lester because he was keeping... Ray went to make his move about the three-pole marker. He could see what was happening. He was getting just caught a little bit for speed. And Lester held him in and... Uh, it's proved decisive in the end. This, but he got ahead in here a little bit. Boxer and Dancer, first run of the season. But, uh, well, she's the one who'll be getting the percentages. And the unlucky one may, of course, be Golden Guest uh, over, over towards the rails, who definitely missed the break. Well, yet another for the conquering stable of Richard Hannon. He's setting a tremendous pace at the top of the trainer's table. That's his 25th winner and uh, that, that's sort of 16 percent of his runners um, taffy williams throwing the sheet on a happy man he's always happy as a matter of fact certainly happy now my noble lord the champion trainer the leading trainer broxton dancer returned 10 to 1 sixth best of the eight runners in the betting but it did touch 12 to 1 there was some money for it the second two can do up the arm 11 to 8 favorite and the third golden guest was returned at 9 to 1 and that was one of the races when you get a bit of smell in the ring when they're calling for three or four outsiders against the fancied runners bookmakers take heart they think they've got a chance of getting the front two beaten they felt quite confident at the off the two can do and crime of the century would not win Lester Bigot comes to their rescue Rocks and Dancer net 10 to 1 it was on the cards an outsider would win this smell round the betting ring well it's quite an interesting race this from uh, a number of aspects so let's go back and have a look at this because number seven golden guest coming out of gates number four misses the break as you can see probably Paul, Paul Every wanted to uh, get get her settled and uh, Brockton Dancer right at the back of the field now along with the um, golden guest and just from a tactical point of view it's quite interesting this because you've got Yakin taking them along crime of the century comes along and at this point Ray Cochran on to Gandu, he's got to, he's in behind Jakin, has got nowhere to go, and at this stage, you can see he just goes to move out to come to the left to challenge Crime of the Century, and Lester just niggles along a little bit there on Brockton Dancer just to keep him in, and Ray has to sort of uh, go back in behind Jakin. <laughs> yes, how fascinating you should have seen that. It just shows what made you a champion jockey, and perhaps what makes Lester a champion jockey, because he has closed the gap. Ray has no chance of doing anything but easing back and pulling round. Now he's got daylight, but too late. The maestro has closed the door and opened the door for himself to victory. First, number five, Brockton Dancer at 10 to 1. Second, number three, Two Can Do, 11 to 8 favourite. And third, number seven, Golden Guest, returned at 9 to 1 and 8 ran. At Hayden, at 3 o'clock, was won by number three, Elite Reg, even money favourite. Second, number five, Chaotis, 9 to 2. And third, number one, Palace Gate King at 5 to 1. Non runner, 6 and 5 ran. At Doncaster, the 250 was won by number seven, Hookie Hoochie Man, at the 4 to 1 favourite. Second number nine, I'm a dreamer at 12 to 1. And third number one, Amiar is 20 to 1. Non runner 20 and 19 ran. Southall, the 230, three Alcoy, 9 to 4. Four Court Circular, 9 to 2. And two Limitea, the 11 to 10 favourite. Non runner one, five ran. And a toast to the 235 is won by number five, Master Mark, 13 to 8 favourite. Second number two, Nell Tama, two to one, and third number four, Lad Lane at 16 to one. Non-runners, numbers three and six, and four round. So you're up to date with what's happened so far. We're gonna take a short break. After that, we'll be talking to a couple of celebrities here in the winner's enclosure, and also meeting the man who won 330,000 pounds at the Guineas meeting last weekend. Stay with us. <laughs> Watch carefully. 
you're about to see something that won't happen very often. built this well are few and far between. 19, 20, 20, ah, you've just caught me putting cuprinol wood stain through its paces. Clever stuff, this. When it's dry, it forms a breathing skin over my surface. So when I stretch, cuprinol wood stain stretches with me. So I don't crack, I don't peel, I don't blister. It's all I need to go on looking this good for years. Cupernol, no one does wood more good. Azerbaijan, Uzbekistan, Kazakhstan. Romantic names from a secret past, opening their doors to international trade. Turkish Airlines announce exclusive new business class routes from Europe and the Middle East via Istanbul to Baku, Ashgabat, Tashkent and Almaty. In a fast-developing world, business is always a challenge. That's why, wherever you fly Turkish, we do our best to make you feel just that little bit closer to home. Turkish Airlines. Another step forward. Shredded wheat is 100% whole wheat. There's nothing added. It's just basic bran fiber. Simply crammed with carbohydrates. Shredded wheat is what the big boys get up for. Shredded wheat and shredded wheat bite size. That's what the big boys eat. Here's a secret every woman will want to know. New super look secrets from Playtex with a hidden panel that smooths and flattens your tummy in all the right places. New Superlook Secrets from Playtex. Briefs, bras, and body shapers. The secret is yours. Dirty floors are no problem with new Mr. Muscle Floor Cleaner because it wipes out grease and grime. Mr. Muscle loves the jobs you hate. The 50 cent bag with Head Over Heels. 22 rock and roll classics. Get Head Over Heels now. Just picked, just perfect. Cape Pairs from the Cape of Good Quality. great moment for you to, re to come back to us and join us again because whenever I smell money I sort of go weak and queasy and sort of I'm slightly sort of shaking now and I got Johnny the fish with me the man who's won 330,000 pounds on the Guinness double well first of all congratulations got the cigar in your mouth he's starting to live it up already he's not a poor man anyway despite the 330,000 quid third of a million pounds when did you place your bet on Thea Darcy and um, oh, Zephonic on 19 of September did you? Now, why did yeah. you choose September? What was the reason you backed those two then? Because I have to go early for the kill. Oh, I see. You want to kill these bookmakers and they're going to yes. be prices. Now, what price you get, say, a Dati? 11 to 1. And Zephonic? 9 to 2. 9 to 2. Corals yeah. were quite generous. What about the other firms, Hills and Ladbrook? Uh, they offered less. They offered less, did they? Yeah, so, that's why I go for the better price. Yeah, but you've had plenty of other bets. For instance, you bet last year, you had a thousand um, pound doubles and trebles on her two, eight to one in the thousand guineas. Rodrigo de Triano, four to one for the two thousand. And you put a Razzi in for the Kentucky Derby. Now, why not concentrate on the guineas? Yeah, because I thought you was a certainty, and the year before I had the bad luck with much to hit the stools and let me down. I thought I'd go for a saver. Arazi looked certainty to win. I make sure I get a double instead of 
for losing the lot again. Uh, because you had Marjo and Shadai. Shadai yes. won the thousand guineas. Yes. And, um, and you got eleven to four and you had six to one Marjo, as he said, yes. hit the stalls and then ran third in the derby afterwards. Uh, second. Second in the derby. Yeah. So, so you think you were unlucky there, do you? No, I never backed him to that view because oh. I didn't think he stayed at distance. Now how worried were you when Saya Dati lost her trial, beaten in the Nell Gwyn, and Zafonic was beaten over at Maze on the Feet? I was worried a bit, but because the two horses lost the year before, I was still confident because maybe cover the bookies a bit mm. and save their money a little bit. Mm. Now, why are you called Johnny the Fish? And because I'm selling fish, yes. and everybody knows me by that name, yeah, I, Johnny the Fish. I think he's doing well, the fish business, is it? Oh, yes, thank you, yes. But, but you aren't out on the North Sea on your trawl, trawl are you? Uh, no, I'm selling fish. No, no you're, going, you're, going, you're going to sell it. And down in Southampton? Yeah. Yes. And do you have big bets in other races during the year? Or oh, yes, yes. So you, you have won some money and lost some money. What's your biggest win before this? Uh, it was uh, last year on the £50,000 double, 500. But how many times? 1,000 each way, got mm. 20 to 1 mm. for the Lincoln. Mm. So you always, you always go for big prices. Big prices and the under post. I believe bagging the champion horses to win mm. money. Now, what were you doing when I was saying to one or two people, I just whispered occasionally, Zafonic had a chance. Did you agree with me? Yes, definitely. I say, that's my friend. <laughs> he was your friend as long as I was saying to <laughs> And where did you see the race? Um, you were at home, were you? Yeah, I watched you home myself. I want to relax. How, no nerv problem. how nervous were you? I was a bit nervous, but I was, when he was last, I was happy. You were happy when he was last? Yes. Because yes. you knew he was settling? Yes, and coming the last yeah. minute to finish. And there was a terrific commentary that Graham Good gave, didn't oh, he? Oh, yeah, very, very, very good. You. Very good. Yeah. He's a good commentator. Oh, yes, the best. So he is the best when he yeah. calls your yeah. horse the winner. Yeah. If, he, it, yeah, if yeah. he called Colin of Dallas other horse Wharf, you wouldn't have got paid, you know that, oh, if he got it wrong. Yeah, but I think you pay because by number 15 he wins. Ah, oh, you're quite right. <laughs> yeah, well, we've got Trevor Beaumont of Corals. First of all, Trevor, how much did Corals do on the anti-post on Zaponic? Well, we very rarely talk in terms of the absolute figures, but I don't think we'd be far amiss by talking around about half a million. Well, the story going round that I heard last night from a very good source is that you did three million, nearly three million pounds anti -post. That is absolute lies, isn't absolute it? Absolute rubbish. Absolute rubbish. Well, if you only did half a million, and Johnny the Fish here has got a third of a million, uh, you didn't lose very much on the anti -post apart from him. No, apart from um, Johnny here, who decided to come out and batter us well and truly with this um, amount of money. Uh, the rest of the book was pretty much becoming a one-horse Book. But you only you were fielding throughout the winter. Corals did field against the Phonic more than any other firm. Yes, we did. I mean, the horse itself was a uh, very precocious two-year-old, a big horse. It's got to come through the winter, um, which always gives us a chance. And the history of racing is littered with the numbers that didn't actually come through. So, on this occasion, I think the one thing to say about the Phonic is that racing itself needs its heroes. Mm. It's an absolutely tremendous horse, and apart from paying out a check here, which we, we're delighted to do. It was absolutely tremendous to see the horse win. Well, let's go and see it here. There it is. Uh, what will you do? Will you frame it or give it to your bank manager? Yeah, I give it to the bank manager. Now, how are you going to spend the money? Apart from buying me a drink, how are you going to spend the money, Johnny? Oh, I'm thinking to buy another house in Cyprus for holiday. Yes. And stick back in the winners. So, so this will go quite a long way in Cyprus, won't it? <laughs> and you go back on holiday there, will you? Yes, yes. Yeah. Now you a hero over there already. Have they heard about it over there? Yes, yes. I suppose all your girlfriends are going to start tapping you for money now. <laughs> You'll suddenly become friendly with all the people people would suddenly like to know you, wouldn't I'm they? I'm friendly with no money. <laughs> <laughs> there you are. So that's Johnny the Fish there. All I can say about him is, lucky he didn't have Zaphonic for a place. S. Stephen Ludlow, the 2.30, first number two, Storm Drum, 15 to 8. Second number one, Prince Tino, 6 to 4 on favourite. And third number eight, the point is 11 to 1. Non-runner three and eight round. And at 12, well, the 3 o'clock is won by number 7, Trifoline, 11 to 10 favourites. Second number 9, Just Nelly, 33 to 1. And third number 3, Rhode Island Red at 12 to 1. On runners, numbers 5, 6 and 8, and 7 ran. And at Newcastle, the 315 was won by number 3, Brock Tune Girl, 6 to 5 favourite. Second number 2, Antonana Revo, 9 to 2. And third number 6, Capital Lady at 8 to 1, 7 ran. There are sports commentators and there are sports commentators, but I tell you what, my guest here now is a guy immortalised. Cast your minds back to 1966, seconds to go, and you said the immortal words? They think it's all over. 
It is now. Brilliant. <laughs> Brilliant. England's World Cup. Fantastic. Kenneth Wilson home. Lovely to see you here. Nice to see you, Derek. Now, you're normally on the golf course for Sparks, aren't you? I mean, uh, that's your normal. Yes, uh, but uh, I was dragged here. Well, not dragged here. But I play golf for Sparks. I'll be playing golf for them on Wednesday. Mm. But I thought I'd come racing for them on back on the Monday. And I bet you wish you'd followed Bernard Cribbins' wife's tips, because apparently, Bernard, she's having a great day. Whoa. Well, she didn't do very well on the first race, she backed, but um, she had the winner on the last race, which is not bad. Yeah. Ten to one, yeah. that's the figure. Yeah. Unbelievable, isn't it? Well, she must have had all of two and six on that one, so we're quids in, aren't we? Listen, yeah. I remember you, you had a hit record. We're standing with a guy, <laughs> but did it reach number one in the chart? No, 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 it was in the top ten. What was it called? Well, I had two, actually, Hole in the Ground and Right Said Fred. Right Said Fred, yeah, yeah. Fred another. Okay. I can't do it now because it's copyright. But I can't sing it now. We say... I can't we... sing it now. <laughs> <laughs> but, Ken, you're champion a bit, Ken, because you had a, a note. Was it yours number one? It came number one. Yeah? Yes, the England 1990 World Cup record. Fantastic. Was it yes. number one? It yeah. came to number one. I'm furious. I'm standing here with a pop star. There yeah, you are, that you one are of the all-time stars. <laughs> Listen, you, you're doing the, the, the work on uh, the Italian football on Channel 4 on Sunday. Right. How, yes. How's it going? Marvellous. Mm. We're getting lots of viewers. I know you yes, are. Yes, you see, uh, we're keeping Channel 4 going so that you can Let carry on with this race. We keep Channel 4 going so you can get the football. <laughs> and why don't you tell me you're going fishing tomorrow? That's your great I'm luck. fishing tomorrow, yes. Apart from playing golf for Sparks and mm. you know, yes. supporting them as a vice pres, I... Uh, I'm actually having my first day's trout fishing tomorrow, first yeah. day this season, on the test, and I shall be...